Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 7th of March 2023. Around the table, we got myself, Damien Duportel, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Varton, and Kevin Martins. We are six, I see six bullets. Yes, that's a good start. Uh, announcement. Weekly, no weekly plans today. Uh, the plan changed yesterday. The weekly has been moved tomorrow because there has been an, a pre-announce of a security advisory and the weekly release is part of that advisory. So instead of building a weekly today and tomorrow, that will be done tomorrow as requested by the Jenkins security team. Did I miss something? Nope. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, yes. I thought uh, it uh, would have been skipped. But, uh... No, they in order the the release pattern is to deliver a uh, we need to deliver a security release for for weekly at the same time we do LTS, so that weekly users don't have to be forced to use LTS. Weekly is considered as valid to use in production as LTS is. It's just which which release pattern you choose. It's because when if the LTS is concerned, it's a backport from weekly, as far as I can understand. Correct. Right. That's that's the general pattern. Is LTS is is intends to be always a backward port, backport from from weekly. Weekly is the ma main branch, uh, master branch in the case of Jenkins. Correct. So first. So most of the time uh, on the hidden repository that the security team uh, uses, the pattern is always the same. It's like uh, fixing a nasty bug. First, you start on the master branch and you ensure that the weekly, uh, or at least the master branch can, has a correct CI and doesn't suffer from the issue anymore, whether it's security or just a bug. Then you consider if you have to back ports to the LTS line that were forked from previous weekly. So then you backport, you cherry pick the commits if possible. Sometimes you need to adapt things as well. That can be a complicated process. And so tomorrow will be release day. So all these releases where the backports happen, including the weekly branch will happen. Tomorrow is also the day of a new LTS. So about announcement. So no weekly for today, less work for us. Um, Reminder tomorrow will be a big day with a lot of with security advisory, a new LTS, and previous LTS will be updated and weekly will be updated. And I wonder if there if some plugins are also concerned by the security advisory. I don't know. So let's check what the announcement said. Weekly, formal LTS, new LTS. Sounds like no plugin uh, part of the advisory uh, uh, of the announced advisory from the public mailing list. Do you have other announcements? Oh, oh, actually, I guess I have a question. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, I did an inter remind me how I'm how ci.jenkins.io plugins are managed. I did an upgrade over the weekend of plugins on ci.jenkins.io. Uh, was it okay that I did it from the user interface, or should I have done it from a, a configuration as code file? No, it's it's uh, there isn't any configuration as code okay. or whatever. Good. So I was it was okay what I did. Thank you. Absolutely. So next weekly should happen next week, fourth uh, of March. I don't remember the expected number. I assume two the three nine something. I think it's three five nine. maybe. Three, five next week will be three nine five. Correct. Thanks. Uh, the next LTS happen tomorrow. Two dot three eighty seven dot one. 2.387.1. Right. Next security release. I think just in case you didn't err, there will be a security release tomorrow. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next major event, scale was last week, right? No, scale is this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, nice. So I'll be out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then trying to recover a little bit on Monday. And we have DevOps France this week in April. Do you have other major events on the pipe where you can meet the infrastructure team or contributors? Nope. Okay, then let's proceed with the work. First of all, what task were we able to finish during that milestone? Uh, I'm taking them on the order on my screen, not in order of priority. Uh, the Azure service principle credential uh, would have expired tomorrow for the current AKS prod publicates cluster. So we were able to rotate the credential and update the cluster. That required an announcement because uh, the LDAP and release CI uh, services had to be restarted. And that can take from one to five minutes. The main reason is the time required to unmount the data volume in the cluster and mount it to the new virtual machine. Everything went flawlessly. Uh, took 30 minutes time for the system to update, uh, to perform rolling updates. So were any yep. any outages noted? Any meaning? Did we get any complaints from users? Hey, I've been broken by this or that. I haven't seen any. Uh, we we pre, we sent it messages, email uh, two hours prior to the operation. Uh, that could have been one day before. We didn't see any complaint, but for sure there has been some outage. Uh, Stefan and I so that uh, CI Jenkins IO was already under heavy load. So the amount of request cached uh, and waiting, rec reconnecting to LDAP took its toll on the performance of the system, but it was still working as expected, just a bit slower during the five minutes. Uh, haven't seen any other complaint, but for sure that might have impacts. Uh, that mainly as pointed out by Daniel Beck, uh, repo, Jenkinsci.org is the one that could be impacted. Uh, we don't have HA for the LDAP. Next issue, attempt to skip artifact caching proxy failed. So that wrapper issue was opened by Basil. That has been closed. There were two main issues that you can see below. Um, <clears throat> first, the root cause was the fourth one here. Um, 502 bad gateway error due to the, the persistent data for the ACP instances. Some of them were already full at 50 gigabytes. So we had to perform an increase of the size of this uh, persistent volume. That was an opportunity for us since the data inside this persistent volume sh is not a problem, it's caching data, right? We use persistence to be sure that we don't redownload everything all the time. So that was an opportunity for the team to check some uh, live migration of data and resizing on our clusters. Uh, so we learned a lot of things that were uh, written on the associated issue. Uh, there are many tricks uh, to be sure that we don't have any downtime. So it happened without any downtime, except for the Azure ACP, which was already full, but still able to serve requests in read, in read only. The second part was uh, an issue on the way uh, the skip caching proxy label and pipeline library were uh, were uh, processed. That has been fixed by Hervé really quickly to unblock the, the blocked build. Both of these separated issues are closed and we were able to confirm that every builds that were reported as broken by one or the two issues were correctly working as expected yesterday. That include the failed plugin builds due to missing Windows configuration file. That was the same issue. So nice work, everyone. That was again a team effort uh, because we were free and there were many, many things to, to fix there. Uh, tiny things, but yeah, a lot of work for a single day. Just to note that we opened an issue uh, to track the work about monitoring the usage of this persistent volume. 
I'm not sure if we already have this on Datadog and it's only a matter of adding an alert, if we have to add a probe to monitor, if we have to do something else. But yeah, we need to do this. Not immediately because we increase the volume, but that's something to have in mind. So, and I'm a little bit surprised at the 50 gigabyte volume going full. I mean, I've got, okay, I check my local Maven and it's only 25 gigabytes. So, so obviously I'm not as good a representative of, of the usage across the whole infrastructure as I thought I was. Yeah, and now that's uh, the backend extension indexer is using the artification proxy. I think most of the plugins are now cached. In this, uh, in this mural, so yeah. yeah. And and I think, oh, go ahead, Damien. No, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, I think that may hint that artifact caching proxy probably is becoming almost the size of our data volumes on, on repo.jenkinsci.org, right? It's almost becoming a full and complete cache thanks to things like backend extension indexer that builds every single plugin, tragic as that may be. Yeah, okay, thanks. I, I don't know if the HPI files are all there. For sure, for sure it's still smaller because we don't have the whole history of all the former dependency though. Okay, um, last week I was off most of the week. Uh, but Stefan and Hervé took the issue of frequent page duty alerts that was there back there again. Good catch, folks. So <laughs> it looks like that on Azure, the Windows Server templates, when given a big disk, are trying to create a C and a D drives partitioned inside the disk. So when we thought that the issue was fixed by increasing the size of the disk, it was. <laughs> except that the C drive used for the Jenkins builds was still 30 gigabyte or something. And there were a big empty partition D drive with a lot of gigabyte not used. Also the, uh, the image template we were using the image base was uh, with a small disk. Yep. Not only, uh... Yes, uh, good point. It's not the current template that we use. It used to be that one, the small disk that was forcing the creation of a small system drive disk and then automatically created the D drive and extend it to the size of the whole disk. So I have no, absolutely no memory on why I did, because I'm responsible for using that small disk template and I have no memory why did I choose this one. So thanks folks for for going through the pain of analyzing this because that wasn't an easy one. Uh, just a reopening and reclosing of Maven 3.9.0 as uh, pointed out uh, by the team in FRACI, used for backend extension indexer and eventually other jobs was still using a 3.8 Maven version. Uh, we should add an automation of the update of that Maven 3.9.0. We are currently debating and nitpicking about should this be synchronized with the puppets or should it be autonomous, which means, yeah, almost there. That's a good thing when you are nitpicking. All the mail provider deleted that was, that was a user asking for a change of their account Jenkins IO associated email. They were able to give enough proof and the risk was quite low because that person didn't, does not maintain any plugin. Uh, we checked the email mix that person discussed with us also. So yeah, the amount of proof were good enough for trusting that change. Thanks Hervé for taking care uh, of that person. Remove Docker bill for Jenkins CI PCT. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Tim helped Basil to clean uh, former usage of Docker in that uh, repository. Nothing related to the infrastructure as far as I can tell. Jenkins core release disable weekly release. So that was a request from uh, the Jenkins security team. Uh, Tim took care of that. We used the issue to have an audit, uh, an audit trial log and we took care of uh, not updating the configuration of release.ci until today. That should be the same until tomorrow. And that's all. 
finally enable to log in. Yeah, that's a classical uh, someone opening an issue with an account problem. And we don't know their username, we don't know their email, they just doesn't fill the form, so I closed the issue because it was it wasn't filled as expected. That is the completed work. Now the work in progress. I try to categorize the issues because uh, we have a let's say aggregate of issues that are under the same thematics. Uh, we still have an account related issue. Someone cannot access their plugin accounts. That person maintain or will want to maintain that Ops Genie plugin that has been updated since months. So that one is a bit more sensitive. Uh, we ask proof from Jira Atlassian, uh, from Atlassian organization. The person says they are part of the github.com ops Chini, Chini, Chini. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I will rely that even if they can prove they are under that GitHub issue, I don't mind. But still, that email should be absolutely still valid under the Atlassian. So they have to contact their internal IT system because here it's about taking over the maintenance of a plugin that has been updated since month, if not years. So if no one object, we will keep the, okay, we have a first level of proof for GitHub, but we need another level from atlassian.com internal uh, teams. Any objection on this one? No objection. Okay, so that one will magically move to the next milestone. And we will have to keep an eye on that. If no one object, I will uh, make the answer, but I will need your help to help me uh, follow up any feedbacks then. Looks good. Uh, we have one issue, which is not a direct action for, uh, expected from the Jenkins Infra team. Um, so thanks Basil and team for taking care of discussing with Jan about migrating one of his plugins inside the Jenkins organization. So the issue is more for audit log of the whole community and not really anything related to us because it requires a Jenkins CI administration rights, which is not the case for us. Any question or things unclear there? Is, is there a way that we need to flag that to one of the Jenkins CI org admins or the Jenkins CI GitHub? Yeah, organization well, admins, or is it already Tim, done? Tim oh, already Tim says, Jenkins okay, CI. yeah. Got I it. Think he'll take care of this issue since he was one of the original asker about the location of this plugin in, to, in, in uh, uh, 2019. Then we have the expired credential issues still open. Um, during the past 10 or 12 days, almost all the technical credential we use for Jenkins to whatever service uh, expired. Uh, mainly EC2 are not available open by, uh, by LX. So EC2 machines are working today on CI Jenkins IO. I was not able to scan. I assume that uh, Stefan or Hervé, did you rotate any credential on AWS? I don't think so. Okay. So if no one objects, uh, that one will move to the upcoming milestone and we'll have to check on AWS, which is still a CloudBees account. Uh, so one of the CloudBees member of the team will have to check the, uh, what's the name? AWS IAM credential associated to CI Jenkins IO and see if they need to be extended or updated. Uh, so that one is should move to the next milestone. Trusted CI doesn't spawn new nodes. So that one was fixed. Uh, it was the ability to connect to Azure from Trusted CI, which runs on AWS. Stefan and I were able to rotate the credential, apply it. Um, but uh, we wanted to start to manage as code these credentials in the Terraform Azure plugin. So we should at least have an audit log of when we rotate the credential. 
we, we had an issue is that the permission model that we use, we don't want the technical user managing Terraform Azure resources to be administrator of the organization, just in case if that account is compromised, it cannot access the billing and a lot of issues we want to limit. But the consequence is that the permission model is a bit more complicated than we talked. So right now we're able to master, to manage what we call Azure application, which is the abstract concept of I got a technical user, but the part requiring a credential associated to that application or the service principle, which is the user inside the application, that part is a bit trickier. So uh, the last status uh, before we had all these issues to fix and days off and stuff was at least we have a part of this object already managed and only the credential need to be managed manually on the UI. We want to close that issue only when we will be able to manage everything. Right now we are using a temporary credential. That's why that issue must keep uh, remain open uh, because that credential is one month valid. So we will have to, to close the issue there. We have the same for third CI. That's exactly the same. The difference in the case of third CI is that we want to switch that credential to no credential at all using a capability named workload identity management, which is uh, possible in the case of third CI because it runs inside Azure itself. So we can, if we start managing with Terraform or directly on the Azure UI, tell the system, oh, any request sent from that virtual machine will be associated to that account. No need to insert a credential inside Jenkins. That uh, team confirmed that it should work with the Azure Virtual Machine plugin inside Jenkins. So we need to validate that assumption. Two step process. First step is start managing third CI virtual machine with Terraform and then create the workload identity and test it. Same thing, it remains open because the current uh, cert CI, um, what's the name, credential that has been generated manually to unblock the Jenkins security team, that credential is only short-term credentials. So we keep the issue open until it's fixed. It should expire next week. So we will have to work on this next, uh, next time. Uh, we add the same and I forgot, so let me add just a comment here. And if no one object, I will add an issue for CI Jenkins IO, which credential also for Azure also expired uh, during the weekend. That's the issue that uh, Mark mentioned a bit earlier that you try to, uh, to fix. It wasn't clear on the error message if it was uh, related to the way CI Jenkins IO works or if it was something else. It was something else in that case. Thanks, Mark, for taking care of that. Um, CI. So let me write this down. I did exactly the same, rotated the credential, inserted a new credential, restarted the whole machine and checked that the, everything works again. Uh, so CI Jenkins IO, Azure credential. So the idea, if it worked for Third CI, we should do the same for CI Jenkins IO, which is also an Azure virtual machine. So also a candidate for workload identity management, which means no credential better, no need to rotate them. Same as cert.ci. Temp credential and candidate to workload identity management. Is there any question about these credential rotations? So the good point is that our calendar elements were working as expected, but still we had too much things to deal with this week to cover all these elements. So some were done before it failed and some were, we were surprised by, that it happened so quickly. So sorry for the inconvenience and we have a path for improvement there as a team. Uh, Mark Jenkins got signing certificate related issues. We have two ish open issue right now. Uh, what is the status or did you had any news about the DigiCert renewal? 
my apologies. I have the action item to send them a message. I've received no response from them uh, to Stefan's and my attempt, and I haven't yet asked them. So I will do that today. Sorry about that. That's I've got to raise that to them. We've now got, uh, what is it, 21 days or less before it expires. Okay. Do you mind adding me in CC now that I'm back from all the I will days do that. of um, issues? Yes. Uh, so that, um, Stefan, is it okay for you if you keep, wo keep working on that with Mark? But the goal is that I'm there as a fallback for Mark. Is that okay for you, Stefan? Of course, of course. Uh, and I. I remind you that I will not be there next week. Well, and so, and I'm out Friday, but let's, yeah, let's, I'll keep, I'll keep multiple people copied. That way we've yep. got, got and, uh, more yep. than, Je more than Stefan and I know where things are going. Then I propose uh, to add the Jenkins-infra-team email, which is a private email with the world team. So the world team will be ah. aware of that knowledge. Great. Jenkins dash infra dash that's a private mailing list. Mm -hmm. So also Hervé will be part. I I assume Hervé was already part of the yes the email was asked to. Okay, so more news next week. We'll see. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, if it's okay, this so these two issues will keep being moved from milestone to milestone. So I will add them to the next milestone. Now, what about ACP related issues? So the top level is reintroduce an artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. Hervé, do you have a status on this one? Uh, still the progressing on different uh, repositories. Uh, next in line is a uh, Java Talk Generation repository, which I have to finish. OK. Uh, which one did you finish or work on since last week? Mm, I have to check on the issue. OK. I believe backend extension indexer was well, the, the pull request was merged, right? Or not yet? Yeah, but I don't remember when exactly. Backend extension indexer. Okay. So it's been the pipeline step to action and at all. This week? Uh, uh, last week. Okay. Pipeline steps generator. So I got a question here, honest question. Um, were we able to check the impacts on GFrog? Because the subsidiary yeah. question yes. is we don't need to cover all repository and force them on ACP if this repository are, doesn't have any impact. Yeah, so so the data says that artifact caching proxy has done a very positive effect we were previously in the top five consumers we're no longer anywhere near the top five consumers so i i didn't check to see how far down the list we are but we're not top five anymore so nice work so that means we should continue working on this element yes. uh, but that's really important because the time spent on this one so might not be worth the effort but in that case, it, it is. Well, uh, it's, I, I think it's... Now it's less important because we are already in the back. In the, I think Stefan yeah. said it well, that if we needed to use some of Hervé's time elsewhere, I think that's okay. So, so long, right now, we've received significant benefit from what's been done. And, and we're probably going to have to do other investigations to understand... How we how we do more reductions beyond ACP beyond the proxy. I saw one major benefit of Hervé's work on this repository on this let's say exotic repository. Though it's uh, Hervé was able to find the way we were able to retrieve remote object using uh, URL connections and stuff. We're using yeah 
a directly repo Jenkins CI, and they were using all Java form of HTTP clients. So somehow, at least finishing this element will allow us to prepare the future for uh, increasing the Java version from GDK 8, 11 to 17 or even more, which would have been a blocker right now. So at least it's a kind of cleanup project. That's the value I see there. So Hervé, I, I absolutely defer to you on if you see that it's useful to continue on these elements, please go ahead. Your time is well spent on that. I, uh, I think it's still worth the effort. Not only, yeah, the metric of the ACP bandwidth was the top priority. Now that it has decreased, uh, it's still important to get them. Yeah, and it also, yeah. If no one object, um, let's continue one repository per milestone. So you can spend your effort on other major tasks, but still keep that one as a regular one. Is that okay for you? That can be more if you feel it as soon as it doesn't go through other priorities. Looks good. Cool. Um, so on the topic of uh, ACP or GFROG, um, realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. Today's uh, prod publicates with the LDAP restart shows that we need to find a way to have an highly available LDAP, still to do. I started to reproduce, I started yesterday to work on a local LDAP with a, with a set of uh, test data that is already on the open LDAP image. And I'm trying to run this with two pods with a read-only replica. I will want to run it on a local Kubernetes cluster with a Jenkins instance to see how it behaves first before trying to install it on a new cluster. Wait, um, I will want to seemingly how to fine tune the detection of when one of the replica goes away because maintenance or crash. Um, how does it behave and how much time does it take before the, the load balancer is able to switch to the other in the context of Kubernetes. And the other one would be returning? At least, yes. Yes, there is no need for... Um, the only rights come from accounts Jenkins IO. Okay. So the idea is that every uh, instance such as CI Jenkins IO issues, the issues Jenkins IO or even the GFROG repository would have a domain name that will always point to a valid read-only replica or at least an instance that can provide a read. An account Jenkins IO will use another domain name that will always point to a right. Yeah. In right fact, the, the major stress on the LDAP is a read-only stress. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the right is really low and, and can be handled on the, on the side. Yeah, I understand. Exactly. And we can accept that account Jenkins IO is down for five minutes time for the right, uh, for the right instance to be restarted. But yeah, right now it's still not a problem, but it will become if we need to enable authentication, yeah. which that's the next topic. It sounds like Mark that given on the top consumer you saw, we might have to still go on the way of eventually enabling authentication for the mirrored repository. We may have to, although I had a conversation with Basil Crow and he challenged that and said he would like to see more data extracted from the data reports to confirm that, that concept. So what I saw was many lots of requests from a few IP addresses in the high lists to the Maven repo one cache. But Basel's point was, we need to understand if those requests to the Maven repo one cache are in fact generated by Jenkins related activity, or if they are just someone asking for a copy from Maven repo one. Uh, and and it's, I think he's got a good point there. And I think there are ways to answer that question, but it will need some further looking at the data. Because we don't, Basel's point was, we don't want to enable authentication if in fact it's not going to help with the problem yep. right and and if they're doing jenkins development work then then 
that's really not going to change it. That makes sense, especially if the Jenkins activity is uh, something we could fix on a parent POM or on documentation. Yep. Or, or whatever, right? Yeah, if yep. it means we need to look at if that's the case, then we need to look elsewhere to find ways to reduce the bandwidth demand. Makes sense. Um, so we need to challenge Ifrog on that part. And I believe that uh, we have to maybe ask Stephen Chin and Lori first again to give them a status that we showed some effort. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I think I think it's more that not so much that we need to challenge them as rather we need to do the data analysis and bring the analysis of the data to them to show, look, here are our here was our usage before, here's our usage now, here are our key consumers before, here is the reduction of those key consumers now. And okay. and that brings the dismaying one that the largest single consumer is still the largest single consumer. And we're still working on that topic with them as to what we do about that, what appears to be simple abuse case or simple misuse. Abuse is such a strong term. So it's focusing on the main consumers. Yeah, but that main consumer, we cannot do much without GFROG. Right. And that's why we've got that conversation with JFrog is, look, we've got this large consumer that our attempts to find them have failed. Our attempts to appeal to the abuse reporting organization of their ISP have failed. Um, and and we're we're sort of out of options that we can take because we don't have control of the networking endpoints on that service. Great. Is there any anything else on the topic directly to GFrog? Well, there may be, so I may need for I, I will need further help and I'll ping the infra team separately uh, with being sure that the IP addresses in the report are not ours because there was one that we I saw in the report from DigitalOcean in Frankfurt, Germany, that may in fact be one of ours. I'll look at the most recent data. It just arrived today for the last 12 days. And so I have a great excuse to do some more data analysis. Public IP in this list. Right. Okay. Another issue that was open yesterday, quite recently, sounds like a user mentioned an issue uh, with some cached, uh, Maven repo one cached artifactory on their builds, um, RV. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you assign no, and well. had a message. What's the yeah, status? I, I don't I don't know how to resolve that because uh, in the in our repo there are a version of this plugin, but going to dash Atlassian dash two, not until uh, six, and I don't know how it could be resolved as we are mirroring everything. Do you need uh, access with me to the uh, repo, GFrog repo administration, yeah. so we can check if their repository is correctly mirrored, if there isn't any error, yeah, if it's not, not excluded? Yeah. And, okay, you say we have it on repo Jenkins here, is that correct? Not the last version, only until Atlassian 2. And they are requesting Atlassian 6. So I don't know how. I'll just resolve that. Okay. Uh, so we need to check the difference between our uh, repository that mirrors uh, Maven Central and the Maven Central itself then. Yep. Okay. So that one definitively goes to the next milestone. Um, no other question or topics about ACP or GFrog? One, two, three, okay. Uh, other issues. We had uh, hanging agents, uh, especially Maven 17, but not only since the past two or three weeks uh, reported by Jesse. We had issues, but we also had to closely monitor the capacity of CI Jenkins IO to treat builds, particularly the bomb builds, 
that are again more and more frequent. Frequent. I assume that the LTS and security advisory uh, might have an impact given two or three core versions. This increase the amount of possible builds and plugin envelopes. Um, good thing is that thanks to the work of Stefan and Hervé, we were able to increase the capacity of CI Jenkins IO that used to be 150 agent, as you can see on the three weeks ago plateau. So we had 116 because we have 150 uh, container agent Linux, and then the rest are other kind of agents, usually virtual machines or Windows container. And now we have reached the 300. We have the same workload capacity on both DigitalOcean and uh, Amazon. Uh, DigitalOcean allowed us to increase our limits. They, we haven't checked the impact on the spending yet. So we'll have to closely monitor that on DigitalOcean. Um, we also can start monitoring a bit close, a bit more closely the um, studying if we could vertically scale each node of Kubernetes. Right now, each node is able to host three pods at the same time, given the memory and CPU limits we use. So we could study how to increase the size of these machines, given we have more and more frequent uh, builds that could help us to have the same amount of nodes, but handling more capability. And about that issue, um, unless someone objects, initially I said we should close it once we will be able to define two workload capacity, one for the bomb builds and one for the other plugin builds. If it's okay for you, I will proceed to close that issue because the initial problem is fixed and open an issue dedicated on uh, having separated node pools because we don't know when we will be able to do it. And we were able to partially solve the issue here by increasing the capacity and adding a way to get metric. Particular Hervé was able this morning to add a public link on CI Jenkins IO to any developer. They can directly see the current workload capacity. Can we click on it? Uh, it's at the beginning of the. But, yeah. If you go one. to CI Jenkins IO, you see that you can check at anyone and you can be logged out let me try in real time i'm not logged in so it's a public information and you can see a diagram so the colors uh, as uh, are reported on the legend so in that case the gray the gray one is the amount of uh, build in the build queue waiting for an executor and the green one is the amount of online executors so you have free time span Short one is the uh, the past hours. So you can see that the build queue decreased and then increased again. So we have uh, yeah 300 builds on the queue. And then you can see the long one, uh, but that one is only since the last restart. So that's the first step to give some actionable to the developer. If their build is slow, they can check this one to see, oh, I see that we have currently 300 builds on the build queue. That's why you are waiting. Um, the next topic and the next issue, we will have to separate the workload capa capability between BOM and plugins. As you can see today, we have a lot of plugins that are or used to be waiting for the BOM builds to, to finish. So at least we will separate these two kinds of usages to not block the plugin developer. Is that clear? Is there any question, objection, things unclear on that topic? Here. Thank okay. you. So, got to close this one. Got to close and open a separated issue to split workloads. Uh, one major one that has been solved that is the emergency port. Uh, the update center job was failing due to uh, mainly the guy speaking. We had uh, dependencies on a common name blob xfer, which is a kind of air sync for Azure bucket storage. And when we worked on the Let's Encrypt update to support Azure DNS, uh, it broke Pythons. And since that big machine PKG origin Jenkins IO is currently used for synchronizing different plugin updates, 
even though the update center run a trusted CI, which use an agent that connect to PKG to run something to push to the mirrors. And that command, blobxfr, was installed manually and not managed. So we missed the part where it was broken. So we were able to fix it by playing around with Python and we have, uh, we have fixed that on the machine. It was able to, to go back. Um, now, before closing that issue, we still have to track the installation of blobxfr that we moved around all the shell script as a requirement that takes day. So developer of the script can now control the version that will be used. We now need to tell Puppet to check that requirement and install it if needed. Um, Hervé has opened a separate issue to ensure that all the blobxfr uh, should be replaced by a new AZ command line that doesn't use Python. It's statically compiled, easier to install and has way more features because the latest version of BlobXFR was from September 2021. In the meantime, we have different usages of BlobXFR from 1.6 to 1.11. We should have 1.11 everywhere as soon as possible. Um, so that's the, let's say, a definition of done before being able to close that issue. Which led me to another one that you open, Mark. It's a consequence of that issue. Um, while we worked on trying to, to uh, the two or three days while the update center failed, some of the plugin updates were missed by the system synchronization. So the plugin is seen as tagged and released. Its HPI file is uploaded on Repo Jenkins, but it's not available on the download server. So for that part, we might have missed others. Uh, that's absolutely a consequence of the update center. We need to run a manual task uh, with the project to correct these missing plugins. We, we did that part with Stefan using a new method from Daniel that used to tell the update center run not for the past six hours, but way more, two or three days. I don't remember exactly what uh, we did. 49 hours. And it okay. sounds like that, that time windows wasn't big enough. So we will have to run right now um, a big more time, but there is also a manual version, which will used to be the former, uh, uh, former method. It's described on the run books, private documentation. And we have to run the update center project locally on our own machine. So we won't mess with stretch CCI and the current update center. That operation should generate a JSON file with the list of missing plugins. And we can then on PKG origin as part of the procedure, upload that file, run the synchronization script one time in concurrent, concurrently to the current one that should fix at least for this one. So definitively this issue going to the next milestone as priority. Any question? Thank you, thanks very much. Uh, uh, so I assume it would not help to have a list of exactly which the, the process you were describing sounds like it will generate the list of which plugins were missed and will then synchronize them. So because I could read old email messages that I get from repo that tell me what's been released, but that would that relies then on me doing a good job of reading and it sounds like your to, the, the tooling will do a much better job of that. If it's easy and not costing time for you, and only if that, that could be an additional way for us to check that the list of plugins that we are fixing are part of what you see. Yeah, and it, uh, it's not easy. I'd have to dig through my okay. trash. So and, then, and... so then let's let's forget about this one. The tooling should be enough. Uh, Hervé, um, we had this one on hold because of all the activity and incidents. We are back on RHEL as file as far as I can tell to continuing migration of the clusters. Uh, can you give us a status of uh, what you should be able to work on around migration of private gates and public gates as well? Uh, there are two or three, but uh, service we can move at first. The, uh... IRC bot, yes, as to Twitter bot and the GitHub command ops bot. We can announce their migration and then proceed uh, 
the next day. We can, uh, I think there is no prejudice to shut them down uh, while we are migrating them. Uh, um, after we, and we are doing that, of course. Okay. This is not that the services will be gone. They're just moving from one cluster to another. So there will be a temporary yeah. down, a brief downtime. Exactly. And while Twitter has an answer, Happy wasn't available anymore without being for, for it. The bot is still running, so. Yeah, the Twitter one might, yeah, might disappear, <laughs> disappear soon. We'll see, but we'll the... see. Um, and then we also have release CI Jenkins IO. That will be the next steps. Uh, I will let you uh, write down on the issue what you plan for that uh, once you will yes. have finished with the bot. Is that okay? Yes. Cool. We have a few uh, issues now. Create an update CLI manifest to update the Kubernetes quota depending on the CI config. So that's the part where we increase the capacity of CI Jenkins IO. We have two locations where we have the max amount of pods per cluster. One is on Jenkins configuration side and the other is on Kubernetes quota side. We need both to be sure that it doesn't behave unexpectedly. And um, yeah, we need uh, an automation. Once we change them on one on Jenkins, then we should have an open pull request saying, oh, you want to increase the capacity, etc." So that one is to be done. Grant limited access to release CI to some security team folks. So that one uh, is hiding the fact that the airbag model of release CI is too simple and we should add a layer of protection here by restricting was admin access to that instance. And people who should be able to trigger release or part of the release team should only have the ability to trigger builds and read only. Even if that instance is behind a, a virtual uh, private network. So the, and the concern there is, is that we don't want release leads to be able to alter the configuration of the, of the system? Yes, and we don't want them to be able to access to the credentials as well. Mm. Because this credential implies some risk. And the more people have access to this, even if behind inside the private network, the more people could have a mesh, a, a, a machine compromised that will try to authenticate to release CI and try to extract elements. That's okay, not trusting you... people, that's trusting the credential that can be stolen to them. Exactly. Right. Uh, uh, good. So I thank you. I, I hadn't considered that, that aspect of it. Thanks. So thanks, Daniel, for uh, adding this to our radar. Radar? Radar. Out of space on a CI Jenkins IO agent. None of us was able to start diagnosing this one, Mark. Um, it's not. It's not occurred again. So I was. I was surprised. I don't understand why, and I'm. I'm not overly worried about it. Okay. If you don't mind, I will ensure that this build has been kept forever, so we can. It will. It won't be cleaned up. Okay. Might already been the case. I'm interested. So I'm clicking keep this build forever. Okay. So now we should be able to analyze afterwards. Well, and Damien, could you go back to the keep this build forever and could you update the description of that build so that people like me who have a tendency to delete old things will be reminded? Uh, yes. Um, let me add the issue. So I never used that. Where is the Oh, right, Here, I can do it. Actually, let's not yeah, make okay. you do it because I don't, I, I worry about you showing on a recorded session something that's been authenticated. Let me go do it. I can happily do it. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Uh -huh. uh, we will see. We have to analyze this one to see what happened, what is the message, et cetera. 
uh, because it depends on the kind of agent. If it's container agents that is uh, filling the disk, then we have that one might not be easy to solve. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and the reason yeah, the reason I'm a little worried here is that we've just recently added the AWS SDK uh, plugins as mm -hmm. um, dependencies managed by by the bill of materials, and the AWS SDK plugins are huge. So, so we could in fact be inc have increased our our disk use. That was my only concern there. Makes sense. All right, so that one I need to keep this build. Oh, whoops, that keep this build forever is set, and I will add keep. Okay, got it. Thanks, Stefan. Do you have a status about update CLI mixing indentations? Um, we did upgrade everywhere the update CLI to is uh, zero point forty six, I think, okay. and um, and this one is back in the correct two spaces indentation we still need to check if um, if it repair the the one that were broken with full uh, indentation i've not seen any um, uh, version of bad ones since then okay um, do you mind after this meeting just to update this just give a status as a comment on the issue oh, yeah Basically, oh, that or just that uh, we won't forget in one week. Yeah, yes. Should solve the issue. And if the problem is fixed, you can close the issue. <laughs> of course. In fact, we will be sure on, on Tuesday, Wednesday evening or Tuesday with the new LTS because it will trigger the new one on Kubernetes. No problem. As soon as you had an issue explaining that, a comment explaining that on the comment issue. That on the issue, yeah. Again. Replace update CLI, oh, GitHub action. Too. That's you. What's the status yeah. for you? Uh, about five minutes before that meeting, I had a, a, a green on my uh, version of the update CLI running through a Jenkins file. So um, that should be, uh, um, I'm, I'm doing that in three steps. The first step uh, is um, the new uh, update CLI. Uh, the new Jenkins file, sorry, dedicated for the CLI version. Then the uh, ask code for the, um, the controller to deal with that file. And if it's working fine, I will remove the GitHub action that was doing that for us from now. And Jenkins file and next step, remove GHA. Yeah, that's why it's not in the issue, by the way. I forgot to explain everything. Yeah. No problem. Uh, finally, the issue I mentioned earlier opened by Hervé. Uh, if no one objects, given the work, the load, I will move it to the backlog. The goal is to ensure that we replace all Blob XFR call to Azure CLI call, which will require finding the exhaustive list of these elements, machines, templates, then ensuring that uh, we have Azure CLI and then changing them one after the other, keeping in mind that some might be uh, hard to test or verify until it's really tested, uh, particularly the new plugin synchronization to mirrors or the Jenkins core release. This one could be the area. Yeah, tricky. Uh, back to uh, backlog. Now we had a few new issues to consider adding to the milestone. Uh, feel free to add some if you if I forgot some. Uh, we have a proving I'm not a spammer, so it's an account issue. So that one will be added and we will see uh, what is the request. Migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. That machine, PKG origin uh, Jenkins IO is uh, an upcoming machine uh, is a machine that should be migrated out of AWS as soon as possible, especially given the last changes we had. Uh, we will have to go back on this one given the cost for the bandwidth that it cost us three to 4K per month. Uh, that one will be worked on because some of the Blob XFR fixes for the update center will be part of this one. That's why I'm mentioning it here. 
valid SSL certificate for cert CI Jenkins IO. Once we will have the, the workload identity management, uh, we will be able to add the Let's Encrypt support renewal for cert CI. We still have one month and a half left before having to renew the certificate by hand. So for these two, I assume we won't have any time. So I propose to remove them, uh, let, let, uh, keeping them on the backlog, just mentioning them. There has been a message about remote repository for repo carapslabs.com. The goal was to add a new mirror on GFrog. Uh, Hervé, was there anything else on that one? Do you remember it or not? Because I had it on my notes, but I don't remember why. I don't see why it's on this meeting. Uh, this uh, dependency has its uh, repo added as exception to the mirror. Oh, thing. yeah, that's why. OK. So that one still on the backlog. Um, I saw the move ACI remaining workload to Kubernetes to stop using ACI at all. That require adding Windows, not pull. Um, if it's okay for everyone, let's wait for finishing migrating release CI in the correct cluster, and then we'll see what we can do. And one last, but that might drive our March months, Ubuntu migration. That one is important that I want to migrate this one. It's currently on the backlog. Let me add it to the meeting notes. Ubuntu 20.04 campaign. Ah, so the plot twist, Ubuntu Bionic that we used almost everywhere on our virtual machines uh, is end of life in April this month, this year. We might have like one or two months, extended months uh, with security release, but that's all. This summer, we're basically dead. So we have to upgrade at least to Ubuntu uh, 20.04 or ideally to 22.04. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because we, um, some machines such as PKG Origin Jenkins IO are using packages that are not available on something else than Bionic. So the impact can be great. So we'll have to solve this one in priority. Good thing is that most of our Puppet infrastructure as demonstrated by Stefan and Hervé works very well on Ubuntu 20 and Ubuntu 22. But we will have to migrate everyone to a recent version. My proposal is to focus on Ubuntu 22 because it's the latest LTS. And because Ubuntu 20, was a mess with Python packages. For instance, the create repo tool used for generating the Red Hat repositories of Jenkins doesn't exist in any form on Ubuntu 20 and is not installable and compilable. It will break due to the way Python packages are done on that distribution. So that's the proposal to use a decent and the most recent LTS. Yeah, we saved two years. So the two top items will be pkg.origin.jenkins.io. And then the Packer images, Hervé did uh, the first EV lifting. We should be able that to migrate our agent images, both container and virtual machines to that version as well. That should be the two step that we can start working on. A note about PKG origin Jenkins IO, most of the testing can be done since we use the Docker uh, image for the local puppet thing. So we should start at least if what kind of packages just such as create repo and the rest exist on the current machine and see if we can find a new way. And the only way to test it will be to migrate the virtual machine in the future. So that will implies doing a snapshot of the current file system, upgrade the machine, restart it, Maybe it will work, maybe not, and then uh, iterate. So that might require to create a brand new machine from scratch to be able to have a blue-green deployment. Hence my proposal, which is this, so I don't have the issue right now, but that will be to move most of the static virtual machines still running on AWS to Azure. 
And that one is important. We have enough budgets on Azure. We have one to two K. Uh, the bandwidth cost should be clearly lower, even with the same amount. AWS is really expensive. But that could be a risk for us to go across the 10K per month limit once we've done that. Um, so that's why for this one, I propose that we keep PKG Origin Jenkins IO on AWS. That should be the last virtual machine standing. And we start migrating trusted CI Jenkins IO. That service is composed of free virtual machine that will be worth it to migrate to Azure and see the cost impact. So if it's okay for everyone, I've mentioned that. I'm not sure we will be able to work on that the upcoming milestone, but for sure we'll have to work on it during the month of March. So I propose we start Ubuntu 22 campaign as part of that milestone. Some work has already been done. And then for the upcoming milestone, we'll work on migrating to Azure. Is there any question, objection, things unclear on these two? Okay, that's finally all for me. I knew you missed me and my one more than one hour meetings. That was very clear and nice. Good job. Is there any other items you want to raise, discuss that I could have forgotten or think? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Actually, I take it back. There is one. So it's been this. Uh, this is this is a an informational thing only. But in the platform sig and the documentation sig, we've realized that uh, we need to do some extra effort to deprecate and end of life some things. So Ubuntu 18 is a good example, but there's an even better example, which is CentOS 7 that Mark Waite doesn't like and wants to end its life. And, and it will end life in June of 2024, whether we do anything or not. But what we're going to do is submit a Jenkins enhancement proposal to improve the way we notify users about things reaching end of life because we have containers that we need to reach end of life, like the Blue Ocean container. We have um, operating system container images like the CentOS 7 controller image that eventually we want to end life because it's upstream is end of life. Um, the, the, the info here is just to say that this Jenkins enhancement proposal will be coming and will propose to extend core Jenkins to have a way to disclose to users that something is approaching end of life and then based on a date stamp has reached end of life. And, and it, it will have to have a way to represent things that are not immediately obvious. So it, it's there's some discussion needed there, but just be aware that end of life is getting attention from the platform SIG and the doc SIG. And I, I guess maybe maybe one more announcement. So Bruno, while I'm here doing announcements and Kevin, the, the second item is that the doc SIG has, a, has decided that about April or May, we will transition the documentation on installation from describing how to install with Java 11 to describe how to install with Java 17. 11 will continue to be so supported, but we will make that transition because we know that Debian 12 will not deliver Java 11 at all. Now we don't, that doesn't affect the Jenkins project because we ship, we deliver Temerin and Temerin will work just fine on Debian 12, but we don't want two sets of instructions. If you're using Debian, 12, you have to always install Java 17. So we're just going to take this opportunity and say, everybody should start using Java 17 when they install Jenkins from our instructions. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not ready, ready to say that last statement that Damien just put in there. And I want everyone to know I, I didn't am. say that, but I appreciate Damien's, <laughs> Damien's leading that way. And we need, we need to remember to switch from GDK 19 to 20 soon, I think. If right. I the... So, so in, I think that that's a, actually another item. Let's put it on the announcements. 
because I yeah. just did the research on this. Let me look to oh, see. We got what... the calendar. I, I, I remember that we, we tw- put the calendar of end of official end of life for the GDK. Oh, I think it's 21 or 23rd of March. Yeah. See? So, okay. Good. So, so I have 18. So the one I'm expecting is 18 April, 2023. We'll have a really? new release of Java. That's a Java oh. release. That's a, no, a new release of the Java LTS Java 11, Java 17, etc. I don't know on the date for Java 19, but you're right, Bruno. I think I have the date. Java 19 to 20 is coming, right? And and so that's another one. I believe it's uh, that will be GDK 21, the upcoming LTS. Is that correct? Well, I I think we've got to go through JDK 20 first. 19 is the current JDK version. 20, I didn't think had even released yet. It, uh, will it be in April 2023 as well, or March? Did I? Let's see. Their stated schedule. Their stated 21 of March release of JDK. So Bruno is exactly right. 21 March, um, JDK 20 will release. JDK <laughs> And then JDK 21 and JDK 21 is is slated to be an LTS but they've not described it's not stated so on their site yet right i don't see it date for gdk 21 lts lined up cool thanks for the announcements yeah excuse me going backwards in time i should have remembered those for earlier no problem that's all for me. Is there anything else you want to address, ask? Cool. So thanks everyone for the huge work. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and say goodbye to everyone. And now I'm going to stop recording. See ya. Bye.